Hey guys, I'm Steven, the creator of Glitterville, and you're watching Handmade Holiday, where we make every day a holiday with DIY projects perfect for all your celebrations. And today, we're making a Mr. Treats Favor candy box. So let's get started. Now, some people think of Halloween as the scariest time of year, but for me, I actually think of it as a celebration of costumes and candy, which is why today we're making this candy favor box. I'm starting with a paper mache box that you can get at the craft store, which I've already painted black. Now, take the lid off and onto a piece of medium weight cardboard, almost the weight of the back of a cereal box. I'm gonna take the box, sit it onto my cardboard, and I'm gonna draw around it with a pencil. Now you wanna leave a little room around the edge because we're gonna use the pinking shears. So I'm gonna trace around and then move the box over because we're actually gonna need two of these because I'm gonna use one on the bottom and one on the top. Once you have this, you're gonna take your pinking shears. Now, when you start to cut, you wanna put the point on the outside of your circle, not on the inside. So your point should just touch your line. And a good tip for pinking is to always line your pinking shears back up before you start your next cut. Once you finish cutting them out, they should look like this. Next, we're gonna paint our circles black to match our box. And you wanna be sure and paint them on the front and the back and all around these sawtooth edges, because sometimes you can miss those spots. So set these aside to dry, and the next step is to stripe our box, because we want it to be black and white stripes all the way around. And the easiest way to do that is with a flexible measuring tape like you would use for sewing. And I'm gonna put that all around my box. Check your measurement, and then with a pencil, you're gonna make a mark at the very beginning and then at the halfway point. Now, the idea here is that you have marked the front and the back, and now you're gonna mark all the other sides. So I'll make a mark here and here, and then you just continue to split that area until you get the stripe you want. Now, once you've made your marks all around for your measurement, take a small ruler and line it up with your box and make your lines all the way around. This will give you your vertical stripes to paint. So when you're finished, it should look like this. Put the lid on and you wanna cast a line all around the lid as well. This will show you where to stop glittering because you don't wanna glitter up under the lid because then you can't get the lid on. And you can finish up by just marking your lines to complete your stripes all around the box. Once you've traced all the stripes onto your box, we're gonna take some white acrylic paint and start painting the stripes. And you don't have to worry about them being perfectly straight because we're actually gonna glitter this later. You can see that I'm only taking the white up to the line where the lid starts. The great thing about using our marking method is you always end up with an even amount of stripes, which is perfect when you want alternating colors. Now it's time for my favorite part of any project, and that is adding the glitter. Now what I'm using here today is a glass glitter that has so much texture. So when you put it on your box, it's gonna give it lots of dimension. So take the top off of your box. When applying glitter to anything, the best glue to use is white tacky glue because it's really thick. So we're gonna brush this on the box onto our stripes very thickly. Now, you actually want to use your black glitter first because you don't want to get those specks in the white later. So I'm going to start with the black and just brush on my stripe with this thick white glue. The shape brush that I like to use when painting stripes and glittering is one that has an angled top because it helps you to get the glue into the edge just a little bit better. So there I've got my thick layer of glue. 
And now I'm just gonna sprinkle the glitter on. And once I've sprinkled it on, I like to take my finger and just sort of mash it into the glue. Now in glittering your stripes, you may get a little bit of a bleed here where the glitter goes outside the line. To fix that, just take the back of your craft knife and sort of straighten it up like that. So I've gone all the way around the box with the black stripes. So shake off all the black glitter, clean up your tray, and then we'll move to the white stripes. Once you've glittered all around your box, sit it aside, and now it's time to do the lid, and then add it to your box. So now our box is beautiful, and I've put the lid back on, it's all dry, and I'm gonna go back to the black circles we cut out earlier, and I'm gonna put some white glue on the bottom of the box, then glue it to the circle. Now once you've put it onto the box, flip the box over and make sure that the same amount is peeking out all around the edges. Now, we're gonna set this aside and start making Mr. Treats. So we have our glittered box, but Mr. Treats is gonna need a tuffet to sit on. And to create that, I'm gonna use a three inch styrofoam ball and a sharp knife from your kitchen to cut it in half. And it's best if you sort of roll the ball away from you, making the even cut. Now, sometimes when you cut styrofoam, you get this unevenness at the bottom, which we don't want. So, if you get it, take a little piece of sandpaper and just rub the styrofoam on it. I'm gonna use some orange and black chenille stems like these. To start this process, I'm gonna take the end of the chenille and I'm gonna push it into the styrofoam. Then, I'm gonna wrap it around the ball like this. And when I get to the end, I'll hold it and then use a pair of wire cutters to trim it, fold the end over, and then push it into the ball. And you can see that what we've got is one chenille stripe. Now, each row of stripes is gonna need three chenille stems of that color. Once you've done three, it's time to move to your next color. Now, I'm making mine orange and black stripes, but you could also do orange and pink or any color palette that you like. Now, as you start to go up the ball, you might notice that some of the chenille stems will want to ride up a little bit. If that happens, instead of starting in the same place that you have on all the others, move your initial point somewhere else on the ball and that will hold down that ring. Now, before I go the rest of the way, I'm gonna take a kitchen skewer like this and I'm gonna take the pointed end through the center of the ball. This way, when I go towards the top, I know that that final circle is at the very top and centered. And then continue on with your stripes. When you get to the very top, turn your ball over and glue onto the bottom a piece of cardboard. Now, what this cardboard does is allows us to hot glue it to our box later. Because you have to remember, you can never use hot glue on styrofoam because it melts. Now, set this aside and we're gonna start the figure. Undeniably, the most important part of your box is your character. I'm gonna start with a styrofoam ball and a kitchen knife and I'm gonna cut a little bit just off the top. Now, this will be the opening of the treat bucket. Then, turn it over and cut a little more off the bottom, but just enough for the ball to stand. Then, take your sandpaper and smooth both sides. I'm also giving a little bit of sanding to the top edge, just to round it a little bit. For the face, I have lightly drawn some eyes onto a cardstock with a pencil. Now these are just gonna be the pattern that you're gonna use to mark the face onto your ball. I'm giving Mr. Treats some big round eyes and a big happy smile. And now I'm gonna cut them out 
with my scissors. And for the nose, he's just getting a traditional jack-o'-lantern triangle. Once you've cut those out, I'm going to position them onto the ball and pin them with a straight pin. And I like to do it with a straight pin because then you can move them around if you need to. Once you've gotten them into the position that you like, trace them with a black marker. Then go to the top where the treats would go into the bucket and draw a line just around the border. Then remove your pins and set your face pattern aside because you will need that again. So to make painting the head easier, I'm gonna take another kitchen skewer and center it in the bottom. This will be how we attach him later, so the hole will be used, but it's also handy to use for painting. To make your paint dry faster when painting on foam, you can add a little water. So paint the entire ball, except for the face and the opening that we marked on top. Once you've painted orange all the way around, indent the top with your thumbs and paint it black like this, and then set it aside to dry. Now for the face, I'm gonna go back to my face pattern and lay them onto some cardstock once again. Now I'm gonna trace around them, but this time we're actually gonna use them, so try to be really neat. And it's better if you make them light. That way you can erase if you make any mistakes. But now that I've drawn it here, I'm actually gonna color onto the paper with paint or markers or both. And when I've got it just like I like, then I'll apply it to the face. So for my character, I'm actually gonna draw in a great big eye and then add a little glint and a pupil and then maybe some lips on his mouth. Then I'll actually start the coloring with some markers. Now it's time to put them onto the head. I'm gonna take a little bit of white glue and I'm gonna brush it lightly onto the eyes, the mouth, and the nose. I'm gonna take the eye and I'm gonna lay it onto the head and there should be just enough glue to hold it. But before I abandon this eye, I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna press this into the foam all around the edges. Using your thumbnail, you could also use a craft knife. And you can already see that this is what's gonna give our head lots of depth. You can see that the features are actually going into the head. And once you've got the facial features basically on, then you can work with the foam and sort of shape it with your fingers. And you can see that I mostly use my marker as a guide and now I'm painting over it. Now, once you've done the pupil, you should always add a little white dot because that's the glint in the eye and it sort of gives the personality to the character. Now, when I'm ready to add the glitter to a project, I think of it almost as like a recipe, like you're in the kitchen. So for Mr. Treats' head, I wanna add some orange glitter, a little hot pink, a little bit of gold, a little light pink. Then with your tacky glue, just brush it all around the ball, including around the details of the face, and sprinkle with glitter. Once you've glittered all around the ball and the face, use your paints to touch up one more time and then set aside to dry. Now I'm gonna put a little piece of wire that I've striped onto him by just pushing it into the foam. This will make him look like an actual treat bucket. I've taken a piece of cardstock and I've cut sort of an hourglass shape like this that has some jagged edges at the ends. So when you fold your paper, you just cut it once. Then cut a small V at the top. This is what will go over his neck. Now. I've cut that from felt, like this, and now I need to make his body. So for that, I've got a kitchen skewer and one chenille stem. Now, I'm gonna fold the chenille stem to find the center, and then I'm gonna put it around my skewer by wrapping it once that way, and then once that way. So now, that 
will become his arms. Now, I'm gonna take the body that I just cut out of felt and layer it over. And this will become his shoulders and his arms, like this. And with a needle and thread, I'm just gonna stitch up the side, stopping just below the arm, because that's where we'll add the sleeves. Once you finish sewing both sides, we're gonna use a little fiber fill to stuff the body. Now, we also wanna add a sleeve. And for that, we'll cut a small rectangle of black felt, wrap it around the arm, and stitch it closed. Now, for the legs, we're gonna do the exact same process, but with a black chenille stem, and then I'm gonna push it up a little bit, but not quite under the shirt just yet. Then, cut a rectangle of orange felt, just like we did on the sleeve, and make his pants. Once you've made the pants, simply turn the ends of the chenille stem up, like this, and make his feet. I'm gonna set him aside and work on the box. On the top of it, just to add a little bit more trim, I've taken some crepe paper that I've sewn through and pulled to make some festooning. And I'm gonna use a hot glue gun to glue it to the top of the box. Followed by the tuffet, then position him on his tuffet like this and bend his legs to add a little bit of character. And I want him to have some sort of collar. So I've made him a little bit of greenery because pumpkins have leaves. I'm gonna add a little bit of gold yarn that has a gold sparkle in it. Okay, so now we're gonna add his head. I've also cut some small pumpkin leaves that I want to add as a detail. And then a couple more at the waist. Now for his accessory, I made a staff from a kitchen skewer and a bead, which I gold leafed, and I printed a flag that says sweet, which I'm gluing around the top. To put it in his hand, bend the chenille over it and wrap it around itself. Then fold your other hand in. So finish him up with some little candies and pieces of crepe paper that you fringed with scissors. Tuck them into the top, just to add a little bit of flourish. So now, all Mr. Treats needs is a treat himself. Now we're ready for Halloween. I hope you enjoyed making Mr. Sweet Treats as much as I did, and that it inspires you to do something wildly creative this Halloween. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Handmade. And just remember, make it and make every day a holiday.